Welcome to the Virginia Education Center for Asphalt Technology. This is VDOT's material certification class related to surface treatment. And in this module, we're going to do a little review and we're going to do some troubleshooting. So first, let's review of things that goes on with actual the equipment and the construction techniques, stuff that we learned about in chapter four of this module. What are the things that we have to do to prepare the surface? Making sure that we filled in holes that if there's proper patching needs to be done. We've cleaned the surface. During that preparation, we gotta get the emulsion out to the project. We gotta make sure the stone's transported out to the project because again, we're bringing all this material out there because we're gonna spray the emulsion and then we're gonna follow it with the chipping process. We gotta load up our dump trucks. So we gotta properly load it back at wherever our staging area is put it in the trucks to take it out to where we're actually doing the work. Got to load that emulsion. A lot of times it's sitting there in a tanker near the project site, near the staging area. We're going to load our tankers or take it from the tanker, load our distributors, take them out to the project. Remember those discussions? Got to make sure our traffic controls stay in place. We got to make sure people are safe. Got to make sure our employees, the workers, the inspectors, as well as those people driving through our work zones are properly protected. So we got to have a good traffic control set up. So as we go through the construction process, so we're now we're ready to work. We've got our traffic control. We're out there. We got the road swept clean. So we'll make sure that surface is good and prepared. We're going to apply that emulsion with that distributor. We're going to go through. We're going to apply the aggregate chips. We're going to take that chip spreader down, get the chips on the, that emulsion. Then we're going to roll it, so we're going to bring our rollers out, make sure that chips are embedded into that emulsion. Then we're going to have to back sweep. So if we need to, we're going to come behind it, sweep it, make sure we're getting those loose rocks off before we open it up to traffic so we don't have a lot of whip off and lose a lot of stone. And really, we need to wait about three days, probably come back, sweep it one more time just to make sure everything's good, seated, and ready to go. What else do we need to know about? Well, let's remember how important temperature is, the environmental conditions, how things like air temperature, pavement temperature, daytime, nighttime, most of our surface treatment jobs are all done during the day. We want to make sure, if we can, good uh, uh, direct sunlight, but there's going to be cloudy days. That's going to affect how our emulsion breaks. If we're going through a shady area, how that impacts it if the pavement's real hot or if it's real cold. Remember, we have limitations within our specs. So we're looking at temperature, air temperature, as well as surface temperature. We're, humidity, if it's very humid, it's gonna take that emulsion longer versus if it's very dry, that air will pull that moisture out of that emulsion much faster. Sun versus shade. Sun, it'll break quicker. Shade, it'll take longer for it to set. Some other things that affect quality, the materials themselves, those asphalt emulsions, making sure that we have the right emulsion, that's a good properly engineered emulsion. Are we using the CRS-2 or the CRS-2L? Making sure it meets specifications. We've got to make sure it's got the right temperature, so it's no colder than 160, but we also don't want to be higher than 175 degrees, so we have those in specs. Our stone, we want good quality stone, good cubicle stone. We want to make sure that it doesn't have dust because if it's got dust all over it, that's what's going to go into the emulsion and we won't get good embedment and it won't hold. We want to make sure that it's saturated surface dry. That's what helps get rid of that dust. But we don't want that stone wet on the surface because then it won't set and go into the aggregate or into the emulsion. So it's got to be dry on the surface, but we want moisture internally. It's got to be hard, it's got to be cubicle aggregate, so we have aggregate requirements. The methods that we follow will impact the quality. So do we have a clean, dry surface? From the very beginning, whatever we're laying this surface treatment on needs to be clean, it needs to be dry. We need to make sure that that chipping operation is close to the spraying or putting down the emulsion. If there's a large distance as that emulsion starts to break and we've got time between the two, by the time that chipper gets there, that emulsion and that stone won't come together as designed. We won't get the good embedment 
and we'll lose material. Got to make sure the application rates are proper. So depending on are we doing a seal treatment, are we doing a modified single seal, or doing a modified double seal, do we have the right application rates, whether it's the emulsion or the aggregate chips that we're putting on the emulsion. Let's assume we've done all these things right, but what happens when they go wrong? What are the things that are common problems or potential problems that you'll see out on projects? Anywhere from insufficient emulsion, we don't have enough emulsion applied to the pavement. Too much emulsion, not enough aggregate, too much aggregate. Ridging, all the way through, there's some different things that can go on that you need to be looking for to see if this operation is performing well. Here, too much emulsion. So we have sprayed more than what was necessary to be able to put this chip seal down. So we have specified application rates. Did we check the distributor to make sure that it was spraying properly? So do we make sure that, that we tested it? We did a plate test to make sure that we're hitting the rate that's required by specification. Because in this case, we have more than what the aggregate can absorb. It's bled up through. We've got too much material. The pavement can become unstable. As you can see, it can also become very slick in those curves. If we've got too much aggregate, so too much emulsion, too much aggregate, look at the dust. A lot of loose material, a lot of potential windshield claims, a lot of material you'll see built up on the sides of the road because we over applied aggregate. Again, that's why we have specification requirements for these different treatments that's based on what we get for good embedment. Here it's hard to tell, but we have a ridging of the joint. We've got too much material. So now, not only will it cause a hump, but this material become loose. So we need to be very careful right along the joints. We don't have excess material that then will whip off and lead to other issues. Streaking. Look at the streaks in the pavement. Some other things that we need to watch for the quality of the emulsion. If it gets cold, remember we have a minimum of 160, but if it gets cold, it affects the quality of the emulsion. Same if it gets too hot, it can change the properties of the emulsion. So you have to have an emulsion that is within specification, it's kept within spec. We gotta make sure that stone is clean. We wanna make sure that it's clean, it's cubical, it's free of dust, it's saturated surface dry. We need to make sure those distributors are operating properly. Remember a couple slides ago I showed that excess of emulsion? We got to make sure that they're calibrated, but we also have to make sure we got a good even distribution. Remember we talked about the height of the nozzles, the angle of the nozzles in a previous module, that we get a good spray, we get triple coverage, so we got to get good even distribution. All those things play into it. The chip spreaders need to be adjusted for uniform spread. So the settings on that chip spreader to get that application rate of 15 pounds, 18 pounds, whatever is required in the contract and whatever is shown in that specification, they've got to be adjusted to make sure that as those chips are spread from that dump truck to the spreader onto that emulsion, that it's uniform across the width. And then that we got those rollers right up behind that chip spreader. Because again, remember this emulsion that's been sprayed it's starting to break, so that water and asphalt bond is starting to break. Now we've got chips on it. Those chips may pull a little moisture, but again, we want to make sure that those rollers are close, so as everything's breaking and going together, we get the rollers to push that stone into that emulsion layer. And we got to make sure that that speed of traffic is kept down. So as we've got delivery equipment, we've got pilot vehicles, by spec, if you recall that module, we're talking about 15 miles an hour or less, but we're protecting it also just to keep the traffic down till everything can break and set together so we don't have the whipping of stone. So there's only a few things that we're really watching for with these treatments, but these things are crucial and critical to making sure that they perform as designed as a preventive maintenance treatment on our secondary system where they're traditionally used. So with that, there are a few questions in your manual in chapter six. 
take a few minutes, go through those questions. If you've got any questions on this material, contact your facilitator and good luck.